What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I'm Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube. And today we are in the new 2021 Ford Mustang GT courtesy of Bob Ruth Ford in Dillsburg, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so of course, wanted to hop in this one today. A little bit of nostalgia, having owned a 2019 Ford Mustang GT, of course. And there are actually some minor changes for the 2021 model year as well. And so in this video, I will be going over and testing out everything about this one. Testing out acceleration, braking, exhaust clip, rear seat legroom, sound system, and so on. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are a few different configurations you can go with for the 2021 Ford Mustang GT. First one being the base Fastback starting at $36,120. Then there is the premium Fastback, which of course is the one we have today starting at $40,120. Then there is the premium convertible starting at $45,620. But regardless of which configuration that you go with, the power plant on the Mustang GT is going to be the same. Powering this beast is a five liter direct injected v8 putting out 460 horsepower at 7,000 rpm 420 pound feet of torque coming in at 4600 rpm power sent to the rear wheels through a six speed manual which we do have today with rev matching by the way which is a dang pretty cool feature i've already tested that out that is pretty nice or a 10 speed automatic with paddle shifters which by the way goes for right around 1600 dollars if you wanted to go with that option, that's actually the option that I had on my 2019 Ford Mustang GT when I did have it. But nonetheless, zero to 60 time comes in at approximately 3.9 seconds for the automatic, 4.3 seconds for the manual, top speed 155 miles per hour either way, with MPG numbers coming in at 16 in the city, 25 on the highway for the automatic, 15 city, 24 then on the highway for the manual taking premium unleaded fuel. But so that before we test anything out on this thing, I did want to mention there are some drive modes, of course, that do come standard on this one. To adjust the drive modes, there's actually a silver toggle switch located directly in front of the shifter. Different drive modes will include normal, snow and wet, sport, track, and drag strip, essentially adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, and the traction control settings as well. And then one more than that, there's actually a steering wheel button located just to the left of that drive mode button. And that is going to adjust the steering sensitivity which I always left it on sport because that is the heaviest steering feel but if you didn't want that heavy steering feel you can of course change it to loosen that up a little bit if you wanted to I'm not sure why you wouldn't want that but anyways before we do this acceleration did want to mention there is also line lock that comes standard on this one as well meaning it essentially locks up the front brakes so you can light up the rear tires at the drag strip warming them up before actually going there. there's also launch control that comes standard on this one as well but now, having said that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and do a quick little acceleration test. First, wanted to mention though, as far as the paddle shifters go, they are lightning quick in the Mustang GT. That is what I had previously, so I can attest to that. As far as this manual shifter goes, that is perfectly fine as well. I actually really like it. We'll say I feel like I like the Tremec a little bit better in the GT350, but this MT82, it's definitely nice. It has a nice clutch feel. It's easy to find the grab points, so I definitely do enjoy driving the manual transmission in the Mustang GT. But now, having said that, let's go ahead and cut right to it let's find a straightaway and let's do a quick little acceleration test here in our 2021 for mustang gt let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed all right this is a good straightaway in three two one little rolling start <laughs> this thing, oh my gosh i missed this oh <laughs> Oh yeah, this is freaking fun, man. I miss having my Mustang GT. This thing is an absolute blast. You can literally feel it in your stomach when you really hit the gas there. What's even better, there wasn't any slipping there. I don't remember that. These tires really stick to the road and it's like an even 50 degrees out here today too. So well done Mustang GT for that acceleration. That was just wonderful. And I think the best zero to 60 I actually had on the street in my Mustang GT with the automatic was actually 4.7. So you're definitely going to be able to hit those numbers I mentioned earlier a lot better if you were to be on the drag strip. But having said that, that acceleration was absolutely wonderful. There are very few cars out on the road here today that can match that. So that is ton 
of driver enjoyment and paired up with the six speed manual, the MT82 here, it's really an absolute blast to drive, I gotta be honest, that was insanely fun. But so anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so, up front you will find 14-inch ventilated front disc with four piston front calipers. In the back, 13-inch rear disc with single piston rear calipers. Did want to also mention though, there is a performance package that we have today that goes for $6,295. It actually adds a good bit, including though, 15-inch Brembo brakes with six piston front calipers. All in all, that 60 to zero stopping distance comes in right around 104 feet or less so it definitely comes to a very nice stop that is one thing i always loved when it comes to driving dynamics is the braking feel in the mustang gt it instantly brings you to a stop so absolutely no issues with that whatsoever but then touching on suspension and handling of course independent front and rear suspension but performance package actually adds a decent amount yet again when it comes to that suspension setup, including heavy duty front springs, K brace, larger radiator, black painted strut tower brace, unique chassis tuning, upsized rear sway bar, and a torsen differential then as well. And in addition to that, there is an optional Magna Ride damping suspension that goes for $3,695. That is one I would definitely recommend. And I've driven that one in the Mustang GT as well compared to my own that did not have it. It is really a decent difference when it comes to those two. And the reason being is because it monitors each shock absorber individually, not only adjusting to road imperfections, giving you a smoother ride, but it also tightens up the suspension during heavy cornering, really giving you the best of both worlds. So that is one option I would probably go with if I were going with the Mustang GT again, if I were to get this car again, and that is one thing I always said when I was driving that car before, I wish I would have got that Magna Ride Dambic suspension, but it is available, so I wanted to mention it to you guys. As far as ride quality goes, you can feel a decent amount of the road, I will say that, and that is pretty much as expected for the Mustang GT. And that was one of the reasons, yet again, I recommend that Magna Ride Dambic suspension because that is going to absorb a lot more of the road imperfections, giving you a much smoother ride there. As far as steering feel goes, again, it's a job so you can really tailor it to your own personal liking, but I love it. Definitely a very nice weight to it in that sport driving mode, so I was always a big fan of that. As far as cabin noise goes, all you really get when you hit the gas is the exhaust note, which is absolutely wonderful. And of course, there's plenty of aftermarket options even at that for the exhaust note. We will be doing an exhaust clip, and I'll get more into that later in the video, but then touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back. And really with the Mustang, visibility is definitely on point when you compare it to some of the competitors in its class. That is definitely very nice. And in addition to that, rain sensing windshield wipers are going to be optional on the Mustang GT as well if you wanted to go that route. But that about rounds up the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2021 Ford Mustang GT. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2021 Ford Mustang GT. It's been a while, my friend. I miss you. Anyway, so let's go ahead and start with the new colors for the 2021 model year. Antimatter blue metallic is new. Grabber yellow and carbonized gray metallic. As far as the deleted colors go, that will include grabber lime, magnetic metallic, and Kona blue. There's always different colors every single year from the Mustang, so I always like to mention that. But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front now of this S550 Mustang GT. Matte black upper and lower front grills with the Chrome Pony logo, which of course can be swapped out with the black accent package that goes for $995. And that will swap out all of the Chrome logos for black ones, in case anybody was curious. To the sides, LED headlights with LED signature lighting does come standard. Of course, those LED headlights do come with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, they will turn on automatically for you there. LED fog lights just below and LED daytime running lights then as well essentially leds all the way around there so that's pretty nice performance pack front lip if you were to go with the performance pack that we do indeed have here today like i was mentioning and if you look up top i'll get a little closer here for you guys these hood vents they are actually functional as well so that is pretty cool so let out some of that heat from that big old v8 that we got under the hood there but now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the mustang gt here and so starting with the windows black window surrounds do come standard chrome 5.0 badging on the front fender and again can be swapped out to black with the black accent package 
body colored power adjustable side mirrors do come standard if you were to go with the premium that we have here today that is going to add to those side mirrors heated side mirrors also pony projection lights which illuminate the pony logo onto the ground at night of course you're not going to be able to see it right now unfortunately but that is definitely pretty cool taking a look down at the wheel setup 18 by 8 inch machine faced aluminum alloys is going to be the standard setup that is not what you're looking at right now of course though because we have the performance package that is going to bump that up to 19 by 9 inches in the front and 19 by 9.5 inches in the back so it is a staggered fitment meaning you're not going to be able to rotate this particular setup but it is going to give you better grip since it does have a wider wheel and tire combination in the back and of course better handling to go along with that as well and there are some other wheel options out there if you wanted to go ahead and spec that up on ford's website if you wanted to but now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the gt here all right so starting up top shark fin antenna body colored of course just below that rear spoiler and this is a lifted rear spoiler that is specific to the performance package that we have today as far as the standard rear spoiler it's actually just a rear deck lid spoiler much smaller that comes standard on this one there is a spoiler delete that is completely free if you wanted to spec it that way that is definitely going to be an option there for you as well just below that that chrome gt logo again is going to be swapped out with black accent package or you can just leave it there if you wanted to as far as the taillights go they are led sequential taillights so i'm going to turn the turn signal on to show you guys actually what i mean when i say sequential essentially it's going to be it's going to look like the taillights are sliding from one side to the other. I love that look on the Mustang, gotta be honest. Performance pack specific rear diffuser down below here. It's much more aggressive rear diffuser as you would get otherwise. And to the sides, dual exhaust outlets with quad tips. So having said that, before we do the exhaust clip, I also wanted to mention there's an active valve performance exhaust system that goes for $895 from the factory. But having said that, there's also plenty of aftermarket systems that are available for the Mustang. I personally had the AWE touring cap back exhaust system, which I absolutely loved. It uses an H pipe as opposed to an x-pipe that a lot of others use but i absolutely loved it but nonetheless do believe you guys know what we have to do next we don't have that active valve performance exhaust today but either way here is that exhaust clip <laughs> so since we are around back of the mustang gt when it comes to opening that rear trunk there is a button on the key fob if you wanted to use that there's also a button located just above the rear license plate that's kind of hidden which a lot of people don't know about if you don't own a mustang so i wanted to mention that as well and there is a button by the driver's side left knee as well but once opened up cargo capacity comes in at 13.5 cubic feet for the fastback a little bit less for the convertible coming in at 11.4 cubic feet if that was not enough space though there is a 50 50 split meaning the rear seats do fold down for actually a decent amount of space i've actually fit four aftermarket wheels and tires back there with the seats folded down which i then swapped out later on so it is a decent amount of space i will say that as far as the rear legroom goes that comes in at an even 29 inches for the fastback a little bit more for the convertible coming in at 29.2 so for reference I mean, even six feet tall, there's really no possible way I could be comfortable back there, but maybe small children. I, I would see small children definitely being able to fit back there, but not a whole lot of space to be honest. But then make your way up to the front seat. Six-way power adjustable driver's seat does come standard. I like that it's six-way power adjustable. Usually with the standard setups, you don't get that. You usually get manual, so that's pretty cool. Power lumbar also coming standard, by the way, as well. Four-way power adjustable passenger seat coming standard as well you almost never see that coming standard so that's pretty cool cloth seating with the mustang logo towards the top is going to be the standard setup however leather front seats do come standard with the premium so therefore that is what you guys are looking at right now heated and ventilated front seats also standard with the premium i was loving that recaro bucket seats is going to be an option that goes for 1595 dollars however that does eliminate the heated and ventilated front seats but still those recaro seats are going to be leather wrapped once again with a little added bolstering for you know going around the turn a little bit faster but overall these leather seats are very comfortable i will say even the cloth seating that i had in my old mustang was extremely comfortable as well so really no issues with any of the seat comfort there then take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped that does come standard it is heated if you were to go with the 401a package so that heated steering wheel is going to be an option however 
Doesn't come standard though. But so then making our way to the startup, let me start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Pony logo on the one side and when you flip it over, lock, unlocking that button to pop the rear hatch. However, it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here, is simply put my foot on the brake and clutch and press that engine start button located just in front of the shifter there. And so, but then once started up, when it comes to the gauges, it is going to differ depending upon which option that you go with. For example, what you are currently looking at is the standard gauge configuration, which I don't mind. It's not bad. It's nothing that's gonna blow you away or anything. But the cool thing is about that, you can change the colors at night. It does have to be nighttime for that feature to work, but I actually changed mine to green when I had my need for green Mustang, but you can change it to whatever color you want. So that is pretty cool but there is an optional 12 inch digital gauge cluster, fully digital, fully customizable with the 401A package yet again. So that is probably gonna be your best configuration up there. It's definitely what I would recommend to go with, but either way you can change all the colors and make it customizable, but also, up there, let me show you guys. There's actually some steering wheel mounted controls on the right side of the steering wheel. If you can, of course, check out your trip A, trip B, all that boring stuff, but there's also track apps. That's the one I wanted to mention to you guys. Specifically, the acceleration timer I used all the time in my Mustang. So you do have to put it in track mode for that actual work. So just put it in track mode that eliminates the traction control. But then you just hit the zero to 60. I usually used automatic start. So it essentially just automatically started once you hit the gas. And then you can see how quickly you can get up to 60. And it'll tell you 4.7 or whatever your zero to 60 time is. That was my best one on the street at least. But that is definitely a very cool feature. And of course, there's zero to 100. There's your quarter mile timer. And there's some other statistics up there as well. Brake performance, that's where you're going to access your launch control and so on. So definitely a very cool setup i love that the mustang has that but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality somebody always asks me first thing no moonroof unfortunately there's no moonroof for the mustang it's just the way it works auto dimming rear view mirror does come standard i love that it's frameless as well in our premium mustang that we have here today it's pretty cool dual zoom climate control does come with the premium also aluminum foot pedals with the premium you do not get that with the base fastback premium door trim with the premium go with that premium word yet again universal garage doors as well multicolor ambient lighting with the premium however I will say there is an option that you can get it with the base fastback as I did. And I love that ambient lighting. I essentially had everything green on the inside. It was stinking cool. So I do like the multicolor ambient lighting in this thing, but overall interior quality isn't gonna blow you away, but it definitely gets the job done. And it's really what's under the hood that makes this car so stinking special. But interior quality was just fine for me when I owned it. I didn't have a problem with it. But now let's make our way to the infotainment screen because again, this is going to differ depending on which setup that you go with. And so so the base fastback is going to give you an extremely small 4.2 inch LCD screen, which nobody wants. But if you wanted what you were looking at right now, which is an eight inch color touchscreen display, Ford Sync 3 system, you need to either get the premium that we have today, or it is going to be optional with the base fastback, which I got with the 301A package. The reason that you want this screen is because of course you get Bluetooth and audio streaming either way, but Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, you only get with this eight inch screen and not the 4.2 inch one, meaning you can hook up your smartphone and therefore you have free navigation up on that screen, as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs, which always worked beautifully for me when I have my Mustang. So that is why I recommend that just for the free navigation essentially. But factory navigation system is going to be optional, although you really don't need it if you have a smartphone anyways. You can of course check out your climate control settings up there as well, along with your radio information. So of course there are three different sound systems for the Mustang GT here. The bass sound system is gonna be six speakers. Then there is an optional nine speaker sound system that comes with the premium that we have today. It's gonna to be optional for the bass. That's the one I had in my bass fastback back in the day. That one actually was really nice. I didn't mind that one. But then there is a 12 speaker Bang & Olsen sound system that is going to be optional for only the premium Mustang GT. So. Having said that, we do actually have that nine speaker sound system here today. So what do you guys say? I'm gonna turn back on the car here and let's test out that nine speaker sound system that we do indeed have here today. I already know what that sound system sounds like. I was just having some fun there. But yeah, the nine speaker sound system really is quite good when you really put it to its limits, especially on Sirius XM, which we didn't have right there for whatever reason. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the Mustang in reverse, you will of course find a rear view camera that does come standard across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always 
is going to lead us into safety. And so front side, side curtain airbags do come standard driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Tire pressure monitoring system also comes standard. Automatic high beams is going to be optional if you wanted to go that route. And adaptive cruise control is going to be coming standard with the safe and smart package that goes for $725. So that is gonna be there for you as well. But in the end, when it comes to my final thoughts of the Ford Mustang GT, if you are looking for that amazing feeling in your gut when you hit the gas, if you are looking for really good handling actually as well, insanely good braking, wonderful driving dynamics all around, definitely go with this thing. It is insanely fun to drive. You have some great performance options. Performance package is definitely one I would recommend. I actually had that on my old Mustang GT. Definitely one I would recommend. And along with the magnetic ride suspension, definitely go with that too. But interior quality is not the best. I guess that's one of the constructive criticisms I would mention on this one. But then again, that's not really what this car is known for. It's not a luxury car. It's a performance car. And that is definitely what it lives up to. But Honestly, in the end, the reason I got mine, this is, in my opinion at least, the best bang for your buck at this particular price range. So that is why I always like to recommend it. But let me know what you guys think of the new 2021 Ford Mustang GT in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're into new car reviews and Mustangs, because I guarantee you I will review this one every single year. But that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. Boom, rev matching, son. No, there's no turbo. <laughs>